Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. In this video, we're gonna take some time to explain some of the concepts that I mentioned in the last video. Now, these are the core electron concepts, sort of how you can think about different aspects of the electron process, considering there is the main and the renderer. These are two separate concepts that are going to be something that is gonna be largely important in this series. So let's get going on that right now. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking a lot about electron core concepts, sort of what electron is and what it does. And while we're doing that, I want to keep note of a URL I'm going to have open for nearly this entire series. Because let me tell you, the docs for electron are pretty dang sweet. So I have electronjs.org open. Now you might notice the little GitHub logo up top here. Uh, GitHub, electron itself is open source and hosted on GitHub is actually created by GitHub. Although now Electron sort of large enough as its own thing, uh, you don't necessarily see GitHub's influence here that much. I mean, there's a whole community around Electron. It's, it's, it's a big, big project at this point. So electronjs.org is really brilliant here. Uh, you can see that this website, well, it'll tell you a little bit about it. It has some quick start stuff. It has a lot of interesting stuff, but really where we're gonna be spending most of our time is under this docs tab. And I like to have this open pretty much 24 seven when I'm working on Electron because there's a lot of little things here. Now there's a lot of guides, which you know I can kind of recommend, but looking at this list of guides, it's a little overwhelming. You sort of want to approach each of these things as you need them. For instance, do I need something in the doc? Okay, here's how I work with the doc. Do I want the app in the App Store? Sure, this is how I interact with the App Store. But personally, I didn't find super helpful to just go through and do these when you don't need them at the time. So these are the kind of things that when you're looking for something, they are excellent, but when you're not looking for them, well, they're just a little extra noise. In addition, what we're gonna be doing is mostly spending a lot of time inside of this API reference, because this is where the stuff that we're gonna be using lives. For instance, you'll remember in our main.js file, let's head to main.js, we imported app and browser window. In fact, if we come in here, you should be able to see both app as well as browser window. And if we were to select one of these, it's going to tell us the entire uh, method, everything that it contains, and exactly why we use it, right? And it even gives us some additional options, right? So to create a window without Chrome or a transparent window in arbitrary shape, you're gonna use frameless window and it links you to that. So the docs I found have been very good. They show you code examples. They show you all of the uh, different functions and methods available within the class. So, okay, so check out these docs. We're gonna have these open all the time. I like to sort of just leave it on this docs page and look at whatever we're looking at. So I will be showing you how I like to personally consult the docs. So with that said, let's dive into a little bit about what Electron is. Because Electron, well, all we did was install Electron and we ran the Electron command and it seemed to pop us out a Chrome window with an icon and everything. Well, I gave you a little bit of a hint there by saying a Chrome window, you might not even notice that this was Chrome. The thing that Electron does is it takes your front end code, your JavaScript, your HTML, your CSS, and it takes a open source browser from Google named Chromium, which is sort of the basis of Chrome, right? It's the sort of most bare bones version of Chrome you can imagine. Chromium is sort of just a, a, a renderer and all that stuff for Chrome itself. Now I'm obviously greatly simplifying it. You can look into the Chromium project considerably more. However, what this does is it's basically using Chrome, the browser as a window for an application. Now that in itself is pretty cool and allows us to take any sort of normal web app and turn it into an actual desktop application. However, the coolest stuff about Electron is the stuff I haven't mentioned yet, which is pretty much everything that you see in here for the API reference. Now the Electron API is where we actually get to interact with native modules on the computer itself via Node.js and these Electron APIs. So Electron takes Node.js, it takes Chromium, it takes your front end code and mixes them all together, giving you full access to many things that are just exclusively available to desktop apps. For instance, well, the ability to control windows, 
uh, have an icon like this that is functions like a normal icon and application installer process, the ability to submit it to the app store. Uh, I mean, there's just an endless amount of APIs that your computer can access that your browser can't at this point, right? So check it out. This is what Electron is. So I mentioned that I was going to make the distinction between this main.js and this app.js because these are two different worlds in Electron. In web development, we typically have what's called the server and the client. The server is where maybe your database calls are living, your API is living, a lot of secure stuff happens on the server, maybe some rendering for server-side rendering is taking place if you've used any sort of application like uh, WordPress, you'll know that PHP is run on the server, Node.js is run on the server, and main.js in Electron, you could sort of relate this to the server. This is going to be sort of where the behind the scenes stuff is working. And when people in Electron talk about this sort of stuff, the back end sort of stuff in Electron, they refer to it as the main process. So the sort of main process in Electron is sort of the backend server stuff. You don't really refer to it as server-side code in Electron because it's not really, but it's where you use Node.js. It's where you interact with the actual uh, APIs on your computer and that sort of stuff. So you can always think of this main JS stuff as the Node.js of your code. It's the main process of your, your site, your application. Now, in addition to that, we also have the front-end code, which is pretty much just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And we're using that, in this case, with React. Now, React is nothing special. You could have just really basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You could use Vue. You could use uh, any framework of your choice. And Electron does not care, because this is just the front-end part of your code. So this is often referred to as the renderer. Okay, so the renderer process is the sort of client side. Again, people aren't calling this the client side, but it's more analogous to the client side because then the renderer is where you're going to be writing all of your sort of front end code. And this stuff is going to be able to be hot reloaded and everything like that, where our node server is going to have to be restarted a bunch. And, and, and we'll go over a little bit about that as well. But you can see here the sort of parallels to the web system. We have the renderer, which is like the client, and we have the main process, which is like the server. And those concepts are going to be some of the main concepts that we're running into again and again in this application. So as we go along here, we will be editing our main JS stuff, and you'll see the process and reason why we use a main.js over something else. And you will see app.js and our actual React application, and you're going to get a good handle on sort of the difference between the two, what the limitations are, and what are some ways that we can communicate between the two. Because typically in a website, you're sending, uh, you know, HTTP requests to the server or something like that. And in this case, we don't have that. Uh, we actually have a pretty elegant system and a couple of elegant options to do so. And we'll, we'll definitely go over that quite a bit in the next few videos. Okay, so check it out. This is a basic overview of Electron. And this is how you can think about our development environment going forward here. So what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be talking a little bit about something that we haven't seen just yet. It might be the most basic concept in an application like this. This is going to be what's called the menu. Uh, the menu system is going to work cross-platform and you're going to see exactly how we can manipulate, create, and do all that good stuff and how we can work in our main process and what that exactly means. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.